friends welcome back to our channel best freaking friends forever so and to, we appreciate you guys joining us for our little talk and we if you haven't subscribed please do so below or comment or like our page so today we're going to talk about et and our trivia question for you guys is how did et get his name so a little background of et its release date was the 11th of june in 1982 its budget was 10.5 million Opening weekend, it made $12 million. With inflation today, that's $33 million. And then grossing in the U.S., it did really well. It made or $435 million, which is $1.2 billion with inflation today, which is crazy. And then grossing worldwide, it was made $793 million, which with inflation today is $2.1 billion. So that's insane. It's mm -hmm. a lot of money. But it was one, I mean, it was one of his best movies. Until Jurassic Park. Yeah, it was the highest grossing movie of all time worldwide until Sp Spielberg's Jurassic Park in 93 was released. And it was adjusted for inflation today. It's still the fourth highest grossing movie of all time. Wow. And you got to think of movies that would be up there. Because I'm trying to think of movies that would be up there with it. So probably what? Avatar? Titanic? Mm-hmm. I think one of the Avenger movies, I think, just broke one of those records, too. Hmm. In the past couple years. Because it's... That's been a big franchise now. It's a good movie. I had never seen this as a child. My parents were really weird about aliens and monsters. Like, I wasn't even allowed to watch Jurassic Park as a kid. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, I had to watch it. I actually got to watch it in school. That was how huh. I got by. But we watched this when, the, um, when all the stuff went down last year. We watched this with the kids. Because I hadn't seen it. They hadn't seen it. And... The boys really like it, and it's funny because AJ, she really likes it. And when I was watching it again for the channel uh, the other, last night, um, she still, like, she was so enamored with it. Like, it just shocks me, because she's such a girly girl. Like, she likes princesses and fairies and unicorns, so for her to watch something like this is very interesting to see her get into it. So she was like, is he scary? And we were like, oh no, he's fine. He's not scary. But when she very first watched it, like she would not leave my side. And then when E.T. was dying, she got so upset. Like she was getting mad at Tony. Like, why are you making me watch this? Like she was mad. Yeah. <laughs> and so then whenever, you know, of course he survives and he gets to go back home. And mm -hmm. we asked her afterwards, we're like, did you like it? Because we figured, oh, it had a happy ending. And we asked her, like, do you like it? And she was like, no. <laughs> and but she watched it again with us. So Well, I feel like even more than E.T., I mean, yeah, he's weird looking kind of, but I feel like the scarier parts, like if I was a kid thinking back, I would be more scared of when they came in with the spacesuits mm -hmm. and like we're coming in from all directions. Like that would, I mean, as a kid, I think that would, I mean, that was scarier to me than right. himself. Right. You know what I mean? And looking at him, but I don't know. I could see why that would be yeah. kind of different for her. Oh, uh, and we were watching it again, and we're a big fan of Stranger Things, the show that's on Netflix. And with it, so now, like, it's coming, like, now we're watching all these older movies like this, and it's starting to come, making me realize why Stranger Things is as big as it is, because Stranger Things has that E.T. feel to it, that retro mm -hmm. 80s type of feel so i can see so it's really nostalgic stranger things is for i mean i like stranger things just you know it's a good show um but i get it now like people our age that were really into these types of movies and like sci-fi type stuff that's why stranger things appeals to them so much is because they're getting that nostalgia which is really neat mm -hmm. to you know because i like anytime i watch something now that makes me feel like a kid I'm just enamored with it. I'm like, yes, let's go. Let's watch this. Yeah, I um, agree. 
Columbia. So Steven Spielberg went to Columbia and was like, I want to make this movie. And they were like, no. And so then Universal picked it up. And this was after he had made Jaws. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Jaws. So he had made Jaws, and that was a big success. Mm -hmm. And then he was, like, presenting them with E.T., and they were like, no. So Universal took it on. They even did that with Back to the Future. They took Columbia turned down Back to the Future, and Universal took it on. And it's like, you think these people would learn. Well, I mean, especially from him. I mean, I feel like he really established himself with Jaws. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like he did. Yeah. So you would think that they would trust, you know, that he knows what he's doing. I mean, I don't, again, but that goes back to the budget. Only $10.5 million. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just, it. for him to do a movie like this, I mean, 10% of the $10.5 million budget went straight to the alien creature puppets and the related animatronics to that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, that's not, I mean, if you really think about it, that's not a whole lot left to work with, really. Right. I well, mean, it is, but. Well, there's, they had to use three people to create mm-hmm. E.T. to use, yeah. to do him. And they had, they actually had a 12-year-old boy, the drunk scene. There was a 12-year-old boy that didn't have legs, and they used mm-hmm. him to do E.T. as being drunk. And I think it's cool that Steven Spielberg shot most of this film from eye level of a child mm-hmm. to further connect with E.T. And I mean, them going back and saying that, you know, I think, I think he told Gertie that they, the adults can't see him, only kids can. And it makes sense because if you look, remember when she's, when the mom is going through the refrigerator and putting stuff away from the grocery store, she almost runs into him a couple. I mean, she literally hits him with the door. I think at one point she walks around him like she can't see him. Well, yeah, and Gertie's telling her, like, stuff. Yeah. And then whenever she's watching the TV and E.T. starts talking, she was like, he can talk. And the mom's just like, she's fooling with whatever Elliot's into. Yeah. Isn't she the the reason? Yeah. Well, we're doing this because it's uh, February 22nd, 1975 is Drew Barrymore's birthday. And so she is 46 years old. Yep. We're doing all of this to celebrate her birthday. So happy birthday, Drew Barrymore, if you're watching this. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, Big Four Six. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but she is so stinking cute. I Well, she's a spitfire, I feel. Yeah. Like, I mean, even for her age, I don't know if... I, uh, I didn't pay attention to how... So this was in 82. She was born in 75. Mm-hmm. Five, six, seven years old? Would that be right? Yeah, 75 to seven, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven. Okay. So, and she like ad libbed some of her scenes. Yeah. Like at the point where she looks down at ET's feet and says, I don't like his feet. That was ad libbed. And mm-hmm. was actually her referring to the grouping of wires coming out of the ET puppet. And then she also ad libbed the line, Give me a break after Elliot tells her only little kids can see ET. So it's like for a seven year old to kind of get that and to. I mean, that's, I don't know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. But she had that in her. It said, but again, she comes, which we'll talk about, but she comes from a showbiz family. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get into, we'll do, we're going to do her more, her childhood type stuff. We'll get into that at the end of this video. Uh, I like, so, so they, she freaks out when she sees ET. Mm-hmm. And then the next time we see her, she has her little wagon. She gets the yeah. flower. Her. she goes out gets the flower and goes and knocks on the door i just i love that part it's so stinking cute <laughs> she's just adorable drew barrymore was such a cute child that's like i know like i don't know watching this movie like especially at the beginning when they're playing i think it was dungeons and dragons wasn't it mm-hmm. that they played at the beginning of the movie yeah just the whole like the, and the mom's just kind of letting them all do it and just sitting there and then you know i feel like it was a very weird I guess, family dynamic or different, like, I feel, I don't know. And obviously we see the dad not there because at one point Elliot tells the mom that he tried to talk to him and he's in Mexico with Sally. Was that her name? I think so. Yeah. And that immediately makes the mom sad. And Michael kind of yells at Elliot and says, I'm going to kill you because he's mad that he's upset the mom with that. So, 
I don't know. It's just, it is. It's a different family. Like, I feel like the mom gave them a lot of space as kids. Like, she left Gertie alone to go get oh, Elliot. Elliot went and went to the end of the driveway to get the pizza for the other boys. Yeah. And it's at like, night. You, yeah, you wouldn't do that nowadays. Well, and then when he was sick, she left him home alone. Mm-hmm. Like, he was sick. Or so he claimed. I mean, obviously, we saw what he did to, to fake sick so he could right. stay home with E.T. But, and at the end, obviously, he really is sick. Or does yeah. get sick. Yeah. But, and I think it was kind of, I don't know if you saw where, according to the film's novelization, E.T. is over 10 million years old. Isn't that crazy to think? Yeah, I saw that. And it is, well, and like, we don't, you know, I think there's other life out there. We, I think it's just so arrogant of us to think we're the only ones out here. Yeah. Well, and so. then I saw where uh, he is more like a plant-based creature. Mm-hmm. And so that's, you know, like, we see a lot of connection with plants there. Like, in the very beginning, one of them has, is scooping up a little tree. And then in their spaceship, we see all these different types of plants and stuff. Well, like, I, we talked about earlier, I had, but I was like, why is Elliot getting sick when E.T. is? Because I was totally confused on that. I was like, I don't understand this. But then I read about it, and it makes it makes sense to me now. So I'll read, like, from the transcript of E.T., it says, the transcript of E.T., we know that E.T. has DNA, which implies a susceptibility to human pathogens, like bacteria or viruses. This would then imply that E.T., presumably having no prior exposure to human pathogens, would be at an increased risk of, of getting sick or getting, like, a serious infection from even a single Earth pathogen, much less dozens that he could have been exposed to. So, we also see that E.T. can establish sympathetic bonds with living creatures, such as the flower and Elliot. So, as E.T.'s health diminished, we can watch a plant that he had revived begin to wither and finally die with E.T.'s death. So, presumably, the bond that E.T. establishes with Elliot is the same as the one established with the flower. So, as E.T. gets sick, there was a sympathetic feedback into Elliot, which made him sick. Which we see that with the drunk episode, too, or part, where E.T. gets drunk, so does Elliot. So, I just, but when E.T., he severs the link somehow, and then that allows Elliot to get better rapidly because he wasn't really sick to begin with so yeah i thought that was kind of cool mm -hmm. well we see so much connection so and if you really pay attention so elliot goes downstairs to get et food and et's upstairs and the dog comes up and scares et elliot gets scared Mm -hmm. he jumps yeah, so yes. there's just little connections like that that you see well like, E.T., when E.T.'s drunk and he's watching that movie of that man and woman dancing, all those moves are the same that Elliot is doing with that girl in the classroom. And that yeah. was really cute, too, where he, like, stood on top of that boy to reach her because she's so much taller. Yeah, they had to film that, I think, a couple times because he was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, she looked much older than him, obviously. I think his audition, I don't know if you saw his audition, he thought of his dog that um has to that had died to express his sadness and spielberg was he cried and offered him the role on the spot so that's pretty cool when yeah. i watched the audition it is pretty moving like he had it yeah, yeah. oh yeah he yeah there's that kid could act for sure mm -hmm. yeah i watched that audition too i was like no wonder they i would have hired him on the spot there's no doubt my favorite part is when et says i'll be right here oh <laughs> yeah i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> that's my favorite part that'll get you yeah when get he your... says i'll be right here yeah, yeah well their hearts even glow which is cool mm -hmm. yep uh, i would say anything with gertie in it like i just love those scenes with gertie she is so cute and she does yeah, she's just a phenomenal actress. Such a at such a young age, she's just done so well. Uh, well, like I said, she like you said, she's and she's continued to do well. Like, yeah, she had her rough spots, which we'll talk about, but like she's persevered through that, and she's really, I mean, she's she's done a good job. Like she's done well for herself, even through all of those, you know, in her past, mm -hmm. all of the rough times. Well, so she started out as early. As 11 months old, she had her first commercial. Yep. And so she started out super young. Um, her family is royalty. Her, um, They were more like Shakespeare type was mm -hmm. what they were really into. And 
so she, yeah, her, you know, she, well, she's even said that she's okay. She's more than comfortable with letting her kids do this work, this type of work. I don't think that, I would say she's probably okay with them waiting until they're a little older because they are still young. Her children are. Yeah. Um, but she's, uh, some of her earlier movies, Suddenly Love, Boogie, Altered States, of course, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, Firestarter, um, Irreconsiderable Differ Differences, Cat's Eye, ABC Weekend Specials, Amazing Stories, Star Fairies, The Ray Bradbury Theater, Babes in Toyland. A oh, I remember that. That's a good one. A Conspiracy of Love, CBS School Break Special, See You in the Morning, uh, Far From Home. So that's some of her earlier stuff. Um, she, her mom was the one that got her started in the drugs and alcohol. And I just, which I know like Lindsay's, Lo, I feel like Lindsay Lohan's mom was kind of the same way. She kind of just let her, she let, like with her, she just was able to move out of state. And no supervision at all. Uh, but Drew, Drew, Barry's mom, Drew Barrymore's mom just was like, here, here you go. Like, I'll go with you. They went to parties together. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot there that Drew has never came out and said. I'm sure there's I'm a sure. lot. It's a lot darker than what we know. Um, so she got into alcohol and drugs and was like really hard on all of that. And at the age of 14, she... They're saying that she tried to commit suicide, but she said that she never did because she never wanted to die. She was just cutting. And a lot of times people cut because they want to feel pain. They want to feel something. And so her mom, that was kind of like a wake up sign for her mom. And her mom put her in a year and a half, re a year and a half rehab to get mm -hmm. her rehabbed. And that was at 14 years old such a young age like she had to grow up so fast yep. and when she came out um it was kind of like agreed on i don't i couldn't really quite gather the details on it but it was agreed on that she would just divorce her mom be emancipated mm -hmm. um, and there's been some known actors to do that like oh yeah falcon did it mm -hmm. um so she um, did that and she said that it was a really like dark day like a very sad day to like break well even her mom agreed that they just were toxic for each other at that time and needed to you know break up basically and she said it was really scary because now she had to pay rent and take care of a home at 14 years old hmm. there's just no I just can't imagine like my mother got married at 15 and I'm like, how are you at 15 years old having a home, a husband, like planning a family? And my mom didn't have, my mom had me a few years later. Um, but just, just, I like, I look back at that age and I'm like, there's no way, there's no way I could have took care of myself at 14 years old. I mean, I, I got cooked for myself and things like that, but like to just full on take on all that responsibility, there's just, yeah. Well, anyway, so she, wanted to go back to work like this is her passion and people pretty much laughed in her face like seriously you're washed up and so she just had to kind of prove herself and um we'll talk about it in the next video but she kind of gets you know does more adult things mm -hmm. we'll get into that because that's kind of when she's older because we're our next movie is going to be her like later on uh but we just kind of wanted to cover over her younger years of what all happened to her um, I'm proud of her. She has come a long, long, long yes, way. Yes. She could have let all that really destroy her and be washed up, but she's she got out of it. She kind of got herself back together. She has kids. She's a good mom. She has a bunch of things going for her nowadays. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's she's stayed relevant even as I mean, you don't get any more child actor than her too. You know what I mean? Right. All the heavy hitters that she has in her life, like for goodness sakes, her godfather is Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. And Sophia Loren is her godmother. Or, yeah. All right. Shelly asked you a question at the beginning. How did E.T. get his name? And the answer is from Elliot. He used Elliot's initials. Because Elliot was in class writing his name. 
And that's how I got it, was E.T. What's, what's Elliot's last name, Elliot? Well, it is the first letter of her first name and the f- last letter of his first name. He was doodling him in class. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So that's well, how they and, E.T. Yeah, and obviously E.T. is also for extraterrestrial. Yep. Because he's an alien to us. <laughs> he's an alien. <laughs> All right. Well, that wraps up today's episode. We did E.T. and talked a little bit about Drew Barrymore because it's her birthday. We want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and liking and commenting and all of that. We appreciate it. We want to chat with you. Please get in the comments. We'll talk back. We love talking about this stuff. That's why we're doing this. We love talking. So I am Tiffany. This is my BFFF Shelly. Join us next time, friends, for another great episode.